హలో ఎవ్రీవన్ ఐ హోప్ యూ ఆల్ ఆర్ వెల్ అండ్ డూయింగ్ గ్రేట్ ఇన్ యువర్ లైఫ్స్ ఇన్ టుడే సెషన్ ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు షేర్ ఇంట్రడక్షన్ టు ఇన్వర్టర్స్ వాట్ ఈస్ ఇన్వర్టర్ వాట్ ఈస్ సీరియస్ ఇన్వర్టర్ వాట్ ఈస్ ప్యారల్ ఇన్వర్టర్ వాట్ ఈస్ విఎస్ఐ సిఎస్ఐ అండ్ యాన్ ఇన్వర్టర్ కన్వర్ట్స్ డిసి ఓల్టేజ్ ఆర్ కరెంట్ టు ఏసీ ఓల్టేజ్ ఆర్ కరెంట్ యూ కెన్ ఆల్సో సే దట్ ఇట్ కెన్ ట్రాన్స్ఫర్ ఆర్ కన్వర్ట్స్ ద పవర్ ఫ్రామ్ ఏ డిసి సోర్స్ ఇన్ టు ఏసీ లోడ్ ద ఎయిమ్ ఆఫ్ ద సర్క్యూట్ ఈజ్ టు సప్లై ఏసీ పవర్ సిమిలర్ టు వన్ ఆఫ్ దట్ రిసీవ్ అట్ హోమ్స్ ఇన్ అవర్ హోమ్స్ ఆల్సో వీఆర్ యూజింగ్ ఇన్వర్టర్స్ ఇన్ అవర్ హోమ్ ద ఎలక్ట్రిసిటీ సప్లై will be stored in the battery whenever his power is switched off the inverter the dc stored energy will be converted into ac after that your lights lamps all will glow that is the importance of inverter in home appliances we are using inverters in solar also we are using inverters because solar energy is dc but for for grid connection it requests ac hence the inverter is important to convert dc into ac at a desired frequency the aim of an inverter is to convert a dc voltage into ac voltage at a different frequency levels firstly i am going to share some basic information related to inverters in the second section i will explain what is series inverter what is parallel inverter the input is dc power the value of input voltage depends upon the application some applications requires 12 volts while some applications may require very high voltages of 1000 volts the ideal output of inverter is a sinusoidal waveform such a wave gives continuous flow of power but the output from the circuit is generally not ideal it gives output in the form of square wave quasi wave or pwm what is pwm pulse width modulation type signal the conversion of dc power to ac power can be done using two approaches both do conversion in two steps first approach a low voltage dc power is converted into high voltage dc power and then in the second step this high voltage dc power is converted into ac power in the first approach what is that uh, a low voltage dc power is converted into high voltage dc power then second step is high voltage dc power is converted into ac power in the second approach a low voltage dc power is converted into low voltage ac power and then it will be stepped up to high voltage ac power by using transformers these are the two approaches we are using in inverters inverters are broadly classified into two types they are voltage source inverters current source inverters that is vsi and csi when the dc voltage remains constant then it is called voltage source inverter or voltage fed inverter when input current is maintained constant then it is called current source inverter or current fed inverter cfi or csi that is the main difference between voltage source and current source inverters sometimes the dc input voltage to the inverter is controlled to adjust the output such inverters are called variable dc link inverters a voltage source inverter vsi is fed by a stiff dc voltage whereas current source inverter is fed by a stiff current source a voltage source can be converted to a current source by connecting a series inductance and then varying the voltage to obtain the desired current a vsi can also be operated in current controlled mode and similarly a csi can also be operated in the voltage control mode 
the inverters are used in variable frequency ac motor drives upss induction heating static vr compensators etc following table gives a comparative study between csi and vsi what are the important differences between voltage source inverter and current source inverter is vsi is fed from a dc voltage source having a small or negligible impedance whereas csi is fed with adjustable current from a dc voltage source of high impedance as seen that vsi is a constant voltage will be given that means vsi negligible impedance we can collect but in csi current will be constant hence high impedance is required input voltage is maintained constant the input current is constant but adjustable coming to csi whereas vsi output voltage does not depends on load in vsi the output voltage does not depends on load the amplitude of output current is independent of the load that means in case of vsi the output voltage do not does not depends on load the output voltage will be constant whatever be the load that is vsi the amplitude of output current is independent of the load that is csi the waveforms of the load current as well as its magnitude depends on the nature of load impedance whereas magnitude of output voltage and its waveforms depends on nature of the load impedance vsi requires feedback diodes whereas csi does not require any feedback diodes the commutation circuit is complicated the commutation circuit is simple as it contains only capacitors the equipments we are using the devices we are using in vsi is bzt power mosfet igbt and gto with self commutation can be used in the circuit they cannot be used as these devices have to withstand reverse voltages the difference between series inverter and parallel inverter will be the inverter in which commutating components are permanently connected in series with the load are called series inverters commutating components are used to switch off the thyristors the commutating components are connected in series with the load then those are called series inverters the series circuit so formed must be under damped under damped circuit only we are using as a commutating element yes the current attains zero value to due to nature of the series circuit series inverters are also called as self commutated inverters or load commutated inverters the another name for series inverters are self commutated inverters or load commutated inverters why because the components that is commutating components are connected in series with the load that is load commutated inverters these inverters operate at high frequencies 200 hz to 100 kilohertz if you see the basic series inverter the inductance l and c are connected in series with the load that is the basic series inverter the circuit consisting l and c these values l and c are also chosen that series or lc circuit forms an interdamped circuit two thyristors t1 and t2 are turned on appropriately so that output voltage of desired voltage frequency obtained by switching the thyristors t1 and t2 we are obtaining variable ac frequency at a different level this is the basics about a series inverter when thyristor t1 is turned on with the t2 off the current i starts building up in the rlc circuit as the circuit is under damped the load current after reaching some peak value decays to zero at a point at point a as the load current tends to reverse 
SCR T1 is turned off. After instant alpha, some minimum time must elapse for T1 to regain forward blocking capability. The minimum time is given by T Q minimum equal to pi by omega minus pi by omega r that equal to 1 by 2 1 by f minus 1 by f r where omega and omega r is output frequency in radian per second omega r is circuit ringing frequency in radian per second. These are the load current waveforms for basic series inverter. The gate pulses IZ1, IZ2 as shown in figure. The output waveform or load current will be AC voltage as shown in figure. Okay. 24 volts is supply connected. After that, uh, rear stat is connected across the load. And CRO is connected across the load. And connections as per connection diagram. Next CRO is connected. Now frequency duty cycle also. frequency. You can measure frequency seventy six, one one six, seventy eight, eight this one one two, very often on the frequency. Stable on the eighty five. Good values this message. This is a parallel inverter. We are giving DC supply 9.4 volts per DC supply instead of 30 volts here. After that, uh, the CRO is connected across the load. The CRO output is like this. And the parallel inverter connection diagram as per the circuit diagram we given. After varying the frequency, we can see the 